Welcome to episode 35 of the British Boxing Blog podcast. You will have myself, Andrew, Stephen is on the line, and we are also joined by GB prospect, um, potential pro boxer, uh, that is Cyrus Ramon Pattinson, uh, training with Team GB out of Berkeley Camp. We speak to him, find out what he's been up to, how he's been ticking over, and what the future holds. Also a bit of COVID-19 discussion as well. Um, Enjoy. Spot on, how are you? Hi, all good. Hi, all good, mate. Working from home, Um, just ticking over, still working. Like, um, how are you? How's things for you? I'm all right. I, I climbing the walls a bit, like in it. <laughs> it's uh, it's mental, mate. To be honest with you, it's it's like I can only imagine how frustrating it is for for a boxer and like a you know like a professional athlete and that's like how, how do you how do you sort of how do you do it? Are you just trying to do as many home exercises or or what? Or well, I've been quite fortunate to be honest with you because uh, I've I've got like in the garage I've got I've got like a speed a speed ball. Up in, inside of it, and I've got like a speed bag, and uh, I've got some weights in, in and in a treadmill and that. And there's like outside, there's plenty of places to go run, and, and uh, we've just been getting sent sessions and stuff from JB for like different circuits and different trunk trunk workouts and that. So I've, uh, I'm quite fortunate at the minute. Like I've got I've got quite a bit I can do, which is which is a good thing. I know like a lot of the lads and stuff, they didn't have like certain facilities, so. I think JB's been sending them bikes and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Like, without sounding daft, then how different is that from your like normal life? Obviously, you'd be traveling and, and sparring and stuff, but outside of that, is that fairly similar? Is that like fairly normal for you? Just be doing stuff like that to take over. Uh, I mean, like when I'm outside of camp, uh, when I'm not when I'm not going to Burnley outside like the JB and stuff. Uh, I, I will go running up here. Uh, I'll do I'll do some sort of, sorts of circuits and stuff, um, but I'll not really use like this the speed ball and that and uh, the weights and that because if I'm doing sessions uh, like a pure gym or if I'm doing them at Down JB or Burnley, uh, so it's slightly different. Like, but I think you're just gonna make it the best you can. Like, because there's not really a lot you can do about it, is there? I, I guess it must be it must be like the sparring and that you miss Cyrus at this point. Do you know what I mean? Like like uh, sharpening uh, up. Do you miss getting punched? It, it just like God, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. Like, but just training with the lads and that, and being with Graham and and down with GB and that. It's like it's good crack and that. It's like uh, not just training by yourself all the time. I mean, I, I don't mind training by myself. I can still push myself hard and I can train hard, and I don't get easily distracted. But uh, it's it's still like you bounce, you bounce, you miss a crack, like you bounce off each other and that, and that's that's a big miss, like definitely. Is it like, is it quite easy to sort of like wander off the diet at this point? Do you know what I mean? And like take your eye off the ball oh, a bit. Like it's it is hard, like definitely in, in the house. I mean, uh, it's that hard anyway when you, <laughs> but when you're sitting in the house all day and that you're just constantly hungry, aren't you? Oh mate, it's un- I- I'll be working from home for about three, four weeks now, and it's just, you know, there's just there's always something there. Do you know what I mean? I eat so much more at home; it's ridiculous. I'm scared. I'm scared to go on the scales, man. <laughs> oh, how are you? See the first <laughs> week just, we were in lockdown, uh, we were like, what? oh, we'll get up nine o'clock, do a little workout, and that. I was doing that every day. That lasted like about a week and a half, and then since then, I'm just like, as you say, just sitting there, and have another pack of <laughs> And uh, it's a pack of biscuits, man. The pot of deadly. I can gone but by I can gone through two and three packets like I need to stay away from them. I've not been Thank getting you. them in the house like because they just they just vanish. I but it's when you can't go <laughs> shopping regularly as well, you stock up. You know, I'll, get, I'll get everything in I might need. Uh, if they're not in the house you kinda eat them, that's the thing, isn't it? That's what I uh, need to learn. Yeah. You're a um, uh, like I, I dodged the skills for about two weeks and uh Mark <laughs> Ellison same, yeah. from J B started getting on my case, he was like, Right, you need to get weird, but I was expecting like 75, 76, but I was only 73, 72 years. So I can't, I can't really complain with that. Like, I suppose it must, you... be, 
impossible for you to sort of look too far ahead because normally you sort of, as an amateur, you, you need to stay around your weight anyway because you could be sort of fighting I, any time or whatever. But at the minute, is there's nothing on the horizon. It must be quite a strange situation for you from that point of view. Oh, definitely. Like, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not so much thinking about the boxing, like, because like normally when you're training, you're training to get ready for a fight. But I know I'll not be fighting anytime soon. It's just, it's more training just from my head. Do you know what I mean? It keeps mm. you, keeps you, keeps your mental, mental, mental health, health right. Aye, because uh, when you start like just sitting about all day and that and. You just uh, it doesn't doesn't do much for you. Like you didn't feel good about no. yourself and that. And You're totally right. I've been trying to I've been trying to do a couple of them Joe Wicks things, you know, in the garden, and obviously just taking the dog out after I like log off for me working from home just does me the oh, world of yeah. good. Just just to get out, you know what I mean? Just to just to get some fresh air and get your steps in and that, you know. At least it's something in it. Just a little break from uh, from your routine, from your cycle, and what you've been doing for no. golf, like Stephen. I've just I like I work for a medical supplies company, so we're obviously raking it in still now. working. Yeah, you'd be raking it in now. Aye, so I we're know. still working. Like we sell things to NHS and that, so we're still, you know, it's, yeah. it's full on. Like we're busy as out, so we're like, you know, kind of like we haven't been furloughed or nothing like that. We're still working away. So honestly, Aye. my head's battered after a day staying at that laptop all day. Like so, <laughs> just getting out with the dog is just, you know, it's after that I'm going for good walk and that it helps, you know. Has it uh, has it affected you much this this uh, scenario? Or has, uh, he's been all right with it. Well, Andrew's a teacher as well, so like obviously he's saying, like in terms of my health and that, I've been fine. Touch wood, like. But as Stevens just said, there I'm a teacher, so obviously we were like one of the last things to get shut down. But it's just still it. sort of skeleton crew at the minute, so I'm like wrote it in. So even though it was Easter holiday, um, I was in one day this week, and then like basically I'm in one day a week, like just babysitting essentially for the key workers kids but then That's I'm, trying to, like, I'm trying to buy a house as well home is obviously buy... about half of what I'd normally be doing so it's all right I'm trying to buy a house with my last as well and obviously at the minute we don't live together so I'm sort of we're separated from her at the minute and then trying to yeah. struggle by, trying to buy a house during the middle of this bloody corona thing so it's hard work like but still taking over at the minute like but we'll see I um what was I gonna ask you there I had a question for you have you heard anything Cyrus about like potential when things might get back to any sort of normality like sport wise or not as there been no just, guidance from that point it's just been guesses really like uh, mm. with, especially with the qualifiers being put back uh, to next year so because I know they were penciled in for a few months time weren't they yeah uh, uh, that's right so after they've been postponed like everything's just still up there in the end I don't think like JB or anyone else has been able to make any like certain. Uh, well, I mean, even like Matchroom and MTK, and I, it's everyone's just went on standby, haven't they? They just they can't make That's any it. announcements or like any plans to get them back to normality until until like the guidelines are, are lifted. But I know that they've been extended for another three weeks, but still, I, I don't think they're gonna. Uh, I still think it's gonna be a bit longer, like. I, I am think the same. I think I think they just sort of announced like dripping it in as oh it's another three weeks and then we'll get to that and it'll be oh another three weeks. They don't want to say like right we're locked down for six months because everyone will then like panic and kick off. I definitely. But then even the matchroom show, I think they hedged the best and said oh we'll go twenty seventh of June. But then from what we've heard, then that's that's definitely not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? That's off. That's so good. like you know, I think that. Sporting events, especially with like ten thousand people are there, they'll be the last to come back. Do you know what I mean? So I definitely, uh, I don't know. Does it like affect? And now you probably can't say too much on this, but like, <laughs> I guess there's no sort of, you know what I mean? Like you mentioned there about the qualifiers and stuff, but like time still ticks. Do you know what I mean? Like you get older as an amateur, and like you know what I mean. And does it sort Aye. of affect your career plans at any point? And do you do you start thinking, oh god, if it's going to be another year? down the line or whatever like the Olympics has been moved back to year you know so do things like change the time frame of you I'll for just, you sort I'll of interrupt there because I'll just add in because we have got a question which is very similar <laughs> to that um, <laughs> I got Colin Middlemas tweeted us saying will Cyrus be looking at going pro with Tokyo being put back a year so I suppose that like adds on to what Stephen was saying yeah uh, no definitely for Colin's answer uh, even just before like while the qualifiers were going on I had already started like 
kind of talking and, and venturing out and planning what was going to be happening next. Uh, and it was all down to pad qualifying, which was literally days away, uh, which would have been the Friday. Uh, and then I kind of would have took my next step then. But being days prior to that, they, had, they kind of escalated. It went from just an open event to being behind closed doors and then to finally getting uh, getting completely shut down. So mm. uh, with them being postponed, I, I still, uh, I would say 99% sure I'm still, that's going to be my next step. So even though I'm training here, uh, I'm still a part of JB and stuff. Uh, I will eventually be looking. I will. I would think when the dust settles, uh, to cl- see what the next step is. Because I don't think there's there's much that, there's much that will be going on on the on the international kind of scale for amateur boxing at any time. Mm, that's, point, that's a good point. That like yeah. Uh, and like like you say, like if if I had, I would probably be looking to make my my debut like this month. Or, or next month if this hadn't happened so time still ticks and I'm going to end up like it was half a year older by the time I exactly yeah that's what I mean so I think you've just got to strike strike while I am hot like and, but I can't say too much I'll uh, <laughs> I will not probe you any further I've said enough I've said enough but uh, nah definitely I'll, I will be looking uh, for that next time you know, you, you mentioned the team there, though. Just going back to you, like, yeah, I'm at the days at Berkeley and that type of Like, you mentioned that that team at Berkeley, you know, yourself, the two McCormacks, Frenchy, the others. Like, what a what a setup that is. Do you know what I mean? That's uh, incredible. Like Dickinson and all that. Like, what an incredible like array of talent that is. Like, being blessed on oh, you, sort of. Unreal. Uh, it's it's just so competitive. Like, I mean. I remember when I first went there because yeah, I get asked the question all the time, and people ask the question about Burley and like John Denon from Boxing News was saying the same thing is there something in the water? But I think it was just because it's that competitive, and when you've got a couple of talents there anyway, <coughs> I think the the good lads you end up getting better because yeah, you've you've got to develop, you've got to improve otherwise because like sink or like, swim type of thing. Ah, it is. It's just like natural selection, and it really. If mm. if you didn't get better, you you're gonna get. You're not gonna survive, really. So, and that was kind kind of the way it was for me. Uh, I was I wasn't the best, but I was I was decent before I went to, to Burley. Uh, but even then, I was just uh, in a in such a big pond. Like I was I was getting bashed left, right, and centre, and and it does stuff to you. Like when you're doing that twice a week, and and it wasn't just a short trip for us either. It was like an hour and a half, two hours on different uh, modes of transport and then you're getting battered and then going <laughs> home and you're doing this week in, week out, like you you end up, you do end up getting better. You kind of, you can't help it. Uh, and that's, and what, that's, that's what brought me on, like definitely. That is definitely very similar to one of the questions we've been sent in. Um, Raymond Adai on Facebook said, what point did you realise that you were pretty good at boxing and that you genuinely had a future in the sport? Uh, he says, was it during the ABA seniors or when GB invited him to train with them? Or as you've just alluded to, was it like a little bit earlier when you were sort of training with the lads at Berkeley? Good question, that. Great question. Like, I've, I've never, like, I never really like, blew me on trumpet. Like, so I, I would like to think I was always quite level-headed. Uh, but going into like, the junior ABAs and stuff and getting the final and CYP semis and stuff. I thought it was all right, like because I was from Annick. Like I'm from like a, like a, in Northumberland, there wasn't really much happening, so I didn't really have myself to place anyone else against. Uh, but it wasn't until I went to Burley and I and I realised that I wasn't like I wasn't. I knew that I wasn't on that level anyway, uh, but it just kind of confirmed it. And then after being at Burley for like three out of four and uh, not really being not really competing or being put in any uh, competitions you don't know if you've got better or you don't know what's mm. happening and then literally when I went into them maybe is I fought three times just to get out of the area and that was that was all, always my goal my, one of my main goals anyways when I started boxing was to just be a North East ABA champion so that's all I wanted really uh, and then obviously when you just take it step by step in that. You you don't really, because you didn't really expect to get that far. Like, I always went in to win it. But 
you just give it the best that you can, you can, you can give and then you just take fight as it comes and every win's a bonus and, and then next thing I know I'm, I'm uh, in the ABA final I thought Jesus like it just happened so fast and then getting the invitations and winning the tries and, and then you think actually well I am I, 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 I am I'm good at what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? So it was a, it was a bit of a, a mad roller coaster to start with. It must be I such a buzz though. Like, it must be a young lad though, just to like, you know what I mean? Go on that sort of journey of being out a boxer and like, you know, see the rewards come from it as well. Like when you start getting on that roll and you start winning a few fights, uh, fights thinking, but yeah, something, something could be happening here. Like I'm, I'm kind of good know. at this. Because I suppose you never know unless you have the fights. Do you know what I mean? Oh, definitely, definitely, and, and like looking back, like there were so many things before, like going into their maybe years, that were that w- would have been perfect reasons, or not even excuses, just like reasons why it shouldn't have happened. Like I was really ill. I remember going in my medical. Uh, I think it was down Shelton, and like I barely breathe. Every time I was breathing, I was coughing. I had a, a chest infection. The doctor didn't want to pass it. Uh, my mom was in hospital, and there was just so many things that it, would, yeah. it was uh, for us just to go and do it. Is like just knock it on the head this year. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a go next year, and like and it makes you think. Like if if you had, would you would you be where where you are now? And if, if, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's like everything happens it's, for a reason, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, I often hear yeah. about like how. There's certain events and things have shaped boxers and the, you know you don't always have it easy and stuff but then hearing like specific examples like that you just think oh bloody hell like again when you're at that point are you basically a kid like you, you know you're not earning from it you're not making anything from it you're putting yourself on the line just to basically as you said there like to compare yourself against the other to see just how good you are you made a good I... point there andrew that like um i listened to an interview that peter mcdonough did with thomas stalker the other day and Peter McDonough asked Stalker, he said, what, what bit of advice would you give to any young amateurs? And he says, just enjoy it. He says, just take it all in because it goes in a flash. He says, enjoy going abroad. Enjoy putting that England vest on, that GB vest on, and just just enjoy every minute of it. And is, is that something you would agree with, Cyrus, as well? Just, just you know, definitely en- enjoy that track with the lads. Enjoy the fights. Enjoy going abroad and just take it all in. I uh, definitely like like as an athlete you're always you're always planning, you're always looking forward, you're always trying yeah. to aim for something and almost you, you do forget to like actually just be in the moment and enjoy what you're doing. Like even though the training in is hard or you might not necessarily enjoy it at that time, you've got to you've got to think you've got to try and enjoy the process as well because like when it is all done and dusted and that and like you're sitting in the house couple of weeks after you after you, you won your fight or your gold medal or whatever and nothing's happening you think like all that mad rush I didn't really soak it up I just kind of like kind of wished it away until I got the fight and then and then you realise that the fight's so fast and you kind of you kind of really hold on to it anymore do you know what I mean? No absolutely I yeah you're right I good point you've def- definitely got to uh, you've definitely got to be a bit more present like and, and try and just like pinch yourself and try and remind yourself to just enjoy what you're doing and and just remember that this is this is something that you you prayed for and like you you dreamt of and now you've got it so you've, uh, it's good reality check like definitely. And how easy or difficult do you find that like especially obviously we've already talked about you looking ahead to turning pro and the sort of different trials and tribulations that brings would it be a case right just focus on I'm making my debut and go from there or do you have like goals in mind as to just how far you could go like I think you've always got to have you've got to always have them ambitions of of what's next and stuff because you, it's it's a hard thing you kind of really tread water and stay the same like if you're not going further up you, you're coming down uh, but I definitely do think uh, over time I have been better at trying to stay present and stay in the moment and because that's where like a lot of people's anxieties come from. If you if you're thinking about the future too much, or if you if you're depressed thinking about the past, and sometimes you've just got to pull yourself back in. Because that's really all that matters is here and now, and that's the only thing that's that's true and, and real. Uh, but you do you do aim like you do pencil stuff in and stuff. But it's it's you live this 
day like you haven't there's no such thing as is the future really it's just it's what you do now that makes the future so you've just got to have them directions of where you want to go but you've got to focus on here and now as well definitely i think with everything that's going on in the world that it really hits home doesn't it because we just said, we said at the start we don't know when we're going to be allowed out of houses and when things are going to be back to normal so there's no point looking too far ahead and stressing about everything it's, as you say live in the moment keep yourself sane keep yourself ticking over i that's uh like me dad was me dad was on about like the, the way the like the global economy and the way everything is and like the, the world's in a bit of a crisis really uh, but a lot of it is out of our control and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Uh, I know I'm going to answer this question and I'll probably open a, a thousand more up, but uh, a family friend <laughs> that's really, really high up in the hospital, like he's uh, one of the top surgeons and he says that he's been in, inside the labs with like a lot of his colleagues and they've, uh, they've dissected this COVID-19 and, and looked at it and He's two hundred percent sure that it's been man-made from the synthetic properties that it holds. It's not wow. Something that would come from like an animal or mutate from a, a human. It's a synthetic, so it's a bit of a That's scary mad, thing. Uh, I have read a lot of stuff, and uh, I was talking about this with one of my mates the other day and stuff, and he was like, just a hunch. He was like, I'm sure this is man-made. You know, he just like the way this has travelled and spread, and like. No. Uh, it's just mad, isn't it? You know, whichever, whatever it is, man-made animals or what, I think. It's just, it's just, it's been like totally unprecedented, you know what I mean? And like Andrew Aye. says, I think one of the positives is that it's probably made people realise and appreciate like the little things in life, do you know what I mean? It's, it's Whether you liked it or not, it's made everyone sort of stop in the tracks and slow down a bit and be a bit more present, which I think that's definitely one of the good things to take from it, isn't it? I like the world's changing. Like, <laughs> you're seeing these... Uh about dolphins in, in the rivers in Venice and being able to see the uh, Mount Everest from 100 miles away and like the earth's healing and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it's changing globally. Uh, uh, absolutely. People's, people's mindsets as well, like you say. Uh, and look at the areas that like we've all taken for granted so much. Like my girlfriend's up in the NHS like and like they've just been used and abused for years and now they're getting a bit more support and a bit more... Uh, a bit more uh, absolutely and so oh, and so they should it's i think it's yeah. it's it's give everyone a bit of a kick and made everyone just sort of, as you say sit back and, and look at things in a slightly different way and maybe appreciate things that you wouldn't normally and hopefully the government look after the nhs as well do you know what I mean? after this do you know what i mean give them the pay oh, rises that they, they should have given them last year and stuff but anyway that's that's a discussion for another day that isn't it uh, uh, this is a morphing into joe rogan isn't it <laughs> All right. Get the conspiracy theories out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, going back to boxing, Cyrus. So I, uh, I guess, like you say, you, you, you're taking over at this point and trying to keep fit, trying to keep your mental, mental health side going as well. Um, are you still in contact with the lads from from Berkeley and your and your GB teammates as well? You, you got a bit of a group chat going on that? Uh, just checking in on like now and again with each other. Like if if one of our puts, I say Frenchies on his shoulder because he must have came off his mountain bike. <laughs> but, oh, I suppose now's a good time to do it, isn't it? Oh, and I see he was flying down from Petro Monument, I think. And he's went out of the handlebars. <laughs> he's went about 20 feet, flying in the air. Brilliant. Uh, so, just had a crack with him the other day. And He'll be going Tommy to bed off, he well. can't do anything. Oh, no. Nah, he's, he's in the sling like, but fortunately, I don't think it's too serious. I think it's going to be Jesus. A, a good few weeks, like, or a couple of months, uh, but it, it's not broke or anything like anything like that. So, uh, but I think everyone's still, trying to make sure, like, look after your families and that, and your, your friends, and checking in on each other, isn't it? No, nah, that's it. Uh, exactly, like you say, like, you know, obviously us two being cousins in that way, we're always in touch in that, and we have like have to keep in touch with Auntie, who sort of. She's like, I don't know, 17, just recently had chemo and stuff. So, you know, we have to keep in touch with her. Right. She can't really leave the house. And I did. It just makes you think of the little things that are important. I 100%. I definitely. Uh, there's, there's a lot of benefits coming from it. Like, you you still in touch with Joe Laws? Do you keep in touch with him? Aye, aye. I still have a crack with him. Like, of, uh, after, the, after the brush, isn't he? <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Have you said he spoke to him recently? Or? 
Uh, right, we're going to try and do a quick chat with him this weekend, I think, because he's just, I've noticed he's, he's always active on Instagram and that. So yesterday I, I says, oh, I'll give him a quick message and see if he's up for it. He says, aye, the weekend. He says, we'll have a, we'll have a chat. So just maybe he's doing something like this, you know, put your... I definitely... This, Put this episode out and we then said like we've got him. for us there's no better time for like catching boxers when they're not actually doing anything so we're gonna have like a, I, three podcasts a week at this rate <laughs> he grows he's laughing really because if you've been to his house man he's it's like he's got like the cronks gym in his back garden he's got like a, <laughs> yeah, I still need to go there, like. oh he's got an extension where i ring in he's, he's got a load like a line of bags he's got weights bench he's got kettlebells and medicine balls and then he's got his patch of grass. Uh, he's laughing him like he, he, he. I'm surprised that Nick Gittes isn't just to train everyone in his backyard. Moved in. Hello. Uh, class. Really? So going forward at this point, obviously you couldn't say too much, but we just keep an eye on the new series and see see what happens when when things get back to normal with regards to your career. Uh, I was there. Uh, I was. Like I was days away from making announcements, like but uh, obviously no, I what remember seeing you. I, I bumped into the Eagles Arena, and you were like, you know, you give us a cheeky wink. And I thought, oh, right, something. <laughs> yeah, but then I was uh, through no fault of your own at all. Sort of, you know, I had to be put in the back burner a bit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but there will be, there will be uh, announcements made, like when everything's settled, and uh, more times to look forward to. Definitely. Just want to give a quick little nudge, to, quick shout out to Danny Boyle as well for uh, sort of giving us this idea. Do you know what I mean? Giving us a nudge towards you. Oh, again, I, so I yes. Shout out to Boyle for putting him for it, eh? Aye, right, top man. <laughs> well, I knew, obviously, I knew Andrew did that interview with it in Costa and that. So, you know, sometimes when you've done one interview, you think, well, do they want to come back on? Should we do it again? But then I thought, well, actually, who, which better person? So, I big shout out to Danny Boyle. Eh? Yeah, I'd killed him I, in the Metro Centre Costa now, like. <laughs> love to get out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, cheers anyway, Cyrus. Thanks no, for I'm going to have to dip off. I'm going to have to shoot off and get back to work myself. He's going back to his job. <laughs> I but thank you. Uh, I appreciate your time. When, uh, all that settles down and that, what catch up we give. All right, definitely. We'll get some announcements off you. No, lovely. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Thanks, mate. See you soon, lads. See you later. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.